So interview skills and building confidence. And we have so much to cover in this session that if I don't get a chance to talk about building confidence, then we will talk about it in next week's workshop. But hopefully I'll be able to get through everything, but there's so much to cover with interview skills and building confidence. Um, we have these agenda topics that we're going to cover. Importance of interview skills, different interview formats, preparing for the interview and handling tricky situations, questions that might come up in the interview and then just building confidence. So hopefully we'll get a chance to cover all of those in tonight's session. For those of you who don't know me, I returned to the workforce uh, 10 years ago when my husband filed for divorce. We have been married almost 25 years and I hadn't worked for almost 20 years. And so it was scary, it was hard, it felt impossible. And yet I managed to get through it, get interviewed, get jobs and I've had multiple jobs over this time period and it's my chance to be able to give back and help mothers who are trying to re-enter the workforce either after a career break or after or they may have been in a career and they want to just pivot and make a change but I want to help um, ignite careers for mothers who are thinking about um, you know building their career. So the importance of interview skills and I think we mostly, we know how important interview skills are because to be able to get the job, most people have to go through an interview process. Not everybody does, but most jobs require an interview. And it's your chance to be able to put on a great impression, like, you know, put your best foot forward. And there's this quote that's the saying that says, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And this holds especially true for job interviews. And it's a way to be able to showcase your abilities that, Maybe on your resume or in your cover letter, it doesn't, it's not obvious. And the interview gives you a chance to be able to speak to those abilities that you have. It also allows you a chance to articulate your value, what you can bring to the job, and then definitely a way to be able to differentiate yourself. And for me, also being, you know, in an interview situation allows you to show your enthusiasm, be able to show how excited you are about this potential job opportunity. And that's something that can't be readily obvious in a resume or in a cover letter. And so while we know that there, you know, the interview is important, there are all these interview formats. And so when I, before I had become a stay-at-home mom, interviews were all done in person. You would apply for a job, you'd get a, um, a, a phone call back telling you, because that was even before email, right? You get a phone call back saying, we'd love to have you come in, come and interview, and you would interview, and then you would find out if you got the job. You didn't have multiple times you would go back in, you would just do the interview and, and then you would know. But nowadays there are video interviews, there are phone calls, um, there are uh, you know, also like Zoom interviews where it's not over a you know, recorded video, but it's live but over um, your computer screen. And so there are different ways to pre prepare for those formats. And I think that that's really important to talk about. So traditional are the face-to-face -face interviews that you, you had years ago before the internet. And that's what a lot of us are very comfortable with. But now there's these phone and video interviews. And I had an interview that where they, they sent me a link and I, did an, I answered questions in a, in a video and they just recorded me. And I felt like I did terrible and I didn't get the job. And I know it's because it felt so weird just to look into the screen and answer questions on the bottom of the screen and look at a pretend person interviewing you. And it made me really uncomfortable. I wasn't prepared for it all. And, and as a result, I, I didn't get the job, but I have only had to do that, those a few times. Most of the time it's traditional interview or definitely over like a Zoom call where you do it you know, over screen. Um, I think it's really important if you have these, you know, technical interviews is what I like to call them, where you're using a computer to make sure that you're in a quiet place for your interview, that there aren't, you know, background noises, that you have a, a good camera on your computer, that they can see you well, that you have good lighting. Um, I think it's also important just to make sure that you've got really good communication and so that you're speaking slowly because sometimes when it's over a screen, there's a little barrier there. I remember when I did an interview with one job that I ended up getting, the interviewer was in Hawaii unexpectedly for work. And so he did the interview with me while he was on a bus. And it was probably the 
worst interview I've ever done with someone because he was, there were all these background noises. I couldn't hardly hear him. And it was just very distracting for me. But you need to make sure that your interview situation is great, meaning you've got no distractions and you can actually have a really great conversation with that person that's interviewing you. So there's different formats in addition to the video or um, you know, a computer interview like the you know, over Zoom or a phone interview. And that is what we call a behavior, behavioral interview or a situational interview. And those are just different questions that they're going to ask you. So in a behavioral interview, you are going to be asked to focus on your past experiences and those behaviors that you had will show them that they can predict your future, how you will handle situations in your future job. You should use the STAR method, which is situation, task, action, and result. And so that is a way to be able to think about what happened, what was the situation, what, what was the situation before the problem or the event happened, what was the task you were asked to do, what was the action you took, and then what was the result. So when I interviewed with Amazon, that's how they do almost all of their interview questions. They are asking, they want to hear your answers in that star format. So if you want to really impress an inter interviewer, you would answer, you would, if they ask you a question, you would think in your mind, what was the situation that I had? What was the task I had to perform? What was the action I took? And what were the results? That is very impressive. So if you can practice that way, that's what I would recommend. Um, you would want to prepare examples to show those competencies that you have. So think in your mind what potential questions they might ask you or what examples you can share. And when I was interviewing for AWS Amazon Web Services, I wanted to do really, really well. And I wanted that job so badly that I did some research on the internet to find out what are some of the potential questions that Amazon asks. And if you go to YouTube, there are many people that, that they put on YouTube and they have a video of the questions that Amazon often will ask. And they have just tons and tons of questions and, and ways you can answer. And so I went and watched all these videos. I took notes and I found my own situations for each of those potential questions. So if they were, for example, asking a question, name a, name a time when you're manager asked you to do something, but you had disagreed with them, what did you do? So I would think in my past job history, okay, when was a time? And I would, and I wrote it out and I had ended up with an 18 page document of the questions that I thought they might ask and then my answer. So I had two examples for each of the situations because that's what I, that's how I prepared. I was told by somebody else who worked at Amazon that that's what they're going to do. So be prepared. And I'm so glad I did that and prepared everything in the star format. I, I put for every single one what the situation was, what the task was, everything. And I got the job, I know, because I went into that really super prepared. So when they asked me, I wasn't fumbling around trying to think, okay, what could be, because I already had a sense of the potential questions they could ask. I knew what answer I wanted to deliver with that. So know the star format for answering. There are also situational interviews, which are where they present a hypothetical situation and ask you to respond as to what you would do if you were in that situation. So think about potential scenarios that they might ask you and how would you respond? And you are going to be asked these, uh, like these questions that you never would have thought you'd have an answer for. And so if you don't know ahead of time what you're going to say, then it's gonna be challenging, but I have some ways to handle those hard questions in just a little bit. So the interview formats really do make a difference. And when I interviewed for um, my job at Domo, I had I started my interview process in March and I got the job offer in June. So, and I interviewed with 14 different people. So some companies have an extensive interview process. So, I, and that was just how it was. I just had so many interviews. They would, okay, well, we'd like you to come back and talk to this person and come back and then there would be a, a gap. But when I interviewed with Amazon, I had my job offer two weeks later. So they were fast. And I had a day of 
interviewed. Like they just had a day where they asked, I had, I met with one person after the next person after the next person just in a whole day's worth of interviews. So be prepared for different formats that way too. So be understanding and patient. I've known people who applied for a job in the summer and didn't hear back from them until the winter time because they had some situations that occurred. They were, the, the job hire was on hold. They couldn't, they couldn't hire somebody. It was, there was a hiring freeze and that can happen too. So just be patient because the job interview process may take longer than you expect. And like I said uh, last time, you can oftentimes interview with the um, recruiter over the phone. They oftentimes will just call you and have a phone conversation. And then you'll actually interview with the manager next, who will then ask you specific questions to make sure that they would want to work with you. And then they'll have you interview with additional people in the organization and perhaps even the owner of the company, if it's a small company, just so that they can make sure that they have confirmation from other people. Because sometimes when you interview, it feels so good to be able to know that you are talking with all the people you might have touch points with. Okay, preparing for the actual interview. So this is something, this is the most important thing you need to do because you only have one chance at that interview. And I'm gonna give you lots of recommendations and suggestions and I promise they will all be extremely helpful. First thing you want to do is research the company and the role that you are interviewing for. So if you've submitted your resume and your cover letter and they've called you back and said, we'd love to interview you, that is your clue to now do as much research as you can about that company you want to work for and the role. So go back to the um, job description. Make sure you understand what were the things that they wanted to know that you could do. What were the re requirements? Because oftentimes in a job description, it'll list the skills that you have to have and the other skills that would be nice to have. So make sure that you can speak to those in any skills you don't have. Make sure you can speak to the fact that you're, you are a quick learner and that you want to be able to acquire these skills and you're, you're, you'll learn to figure those things out. So make sure you know the job description and what you're being hired for. And then the company that you're interviewing with, know the company, do research on the internet. Know, have they been in the news? Have they had some challenges? What are some innovative things that they might be doing? And if it's like, if it's a school, understand the school district and how far, the, how big the school district is and how many students and get, get an understanding for the organization that you are interviewing with. Um, you might also want to understand the values that they have. So go to their website learn about what they believe in what's really important because you're going to want to use those words that they admire and want to have their company culture be around they're going to you want to hear those in your language so for example the company that i work for right now one of our company values is is grit so if i were interviewing with them i would want to use that in my language say i love to show grit by da, 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 and that will be very impressive to your interviewer so make sure you know the company the company values and and any you know information that you think would be important to know it would also be helpful to know current clients too so if they they work with certain clients and you could speak to that that will be impressive to them if you if you want that job badly enough you're going to learn that's like when i interviewed with amazon i studied everything I, I really wanted that job so badly that I did the extra work and probably did more work than I needed to, but I think it showed. Um, I think it's really important to anticipate some of the questions you might be asked and a resource that I loved using and it still is a, is a resource you can use is Glassdoor. And while you can type into the internet common questions for the job that you're interviewing for. So for example, I'm in field marketing. If I wanted to know some questions I might be asked in an interview, I would type in to this, the, this, the browser and search bar, um, give me a list of interview questions for a field marketer director, for a marketing director. So type in the title of what you're interviewing for and potential questions. And there will be sites come up that will give you lots of different options of sites you could go to to learn about questions you might be asked. So that's a great start, starting point. But the best thing is Glassdoor because you can not only ask for those questions, but also they put in the company. So if you want to be, you want to know what questions Google might ask you in an interview, people submit those questions and their answers. And it's so great because you can find the answers that people gave and they will put in their answer whether they were hired or not too. So if they were hired, you're like, oh, I, I, I'm going to trust this person because they were hired and these were their responses. 
super helpful. I don't know if every company has those on there, but I know that the big ones for sure do. So take the time to look at Glassdoor and just do a search for the company and those, those questions. I think when I originally stumbled upon this, I think I was just doing a search, search browser. I think I just typed in the company name, questions that they would ask for a field marketing director. And then it gave me Glassdoor as a potential site to look at. And that's when I looked at it. So that I think is, is, is huge because then you could also just kind of practice as if those were the questions you were getting asked. Um, something else that's really important to do is to review your resume. So I, for one job that I interviewed for, I had submitted my resume and my cover letter online, like a lot of jobs I have now. And I printed my resume out and in, you know, to bring it to my, my interview because I was having an in-person interview. And I thought everything was great. And I gave it to the interviewer and they looked at it with some puzzlement. And I realized I had given them an old resume. It wasn't even my current resume. I was so embarrassed. Needless to say, I didn't get the job. But if I had taken the time to make sure and review the resume, I would have been okay. So oftentimes when we submit our resume online, we're, we're good. We've looked at it, we feel good, but just make sure that if you bring another copy or any time before you're actually gonna submit, make sure that that resume is the most recent resume and it's up to date. Plus, just review it. It'll help refresh your mind and it'll help bring things to your mind. Like when I talk about situations, like if they ask you, name a time when, da, 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 go back at your, over your past jobs and they may have been years ago so you won't remember. That's at least what happened to me. I was just racking my brain what happened and taking that time will just help you be prepared. So know what is on your resume and feel like you're very confident about your past history because you may not have paid attention to it for a really long time. Um, another, so we talked about preparing for the interview with a star format, so situation, task, action, result. And also I think something that's really important to help you prepare is coping with nervousness. So I don't know about you guys, when I get ready for an interview, I get really nervous. And it's interesting, I get as nervous for something on the phone as I do for something in person. So it has nothing to do with being in the room with somebody, it's I'm not confident with myself. And I learned over time how to cope with that nervousness. Now, it's interesting, I've told this to my kids and my son reminded me about this just recently, but I tell my kids when they're really nervous, I tell them that that's excitement, that what you're feeling is excitement. You are excited about the game you're about to play in. You're excited about the opportunity to whatever. You are not nervous, you are excited. And I've told my kids that over and over again so that they could start thinking that those feelings or the butterflies in your stomach is actually excitement. Like it's excitement, your body's excited, so be excited. And I was nervous about something and, and my son said, mom, you're not nervous, you are excited. <laughs> I was like, you're right, I'm excited. And you kind of have to trick your mind into thinking and, and, then, and have it affect your body to have you think that it's, it's exciting. It's, this is exciting. The fact that you're getting an interview is exciting. There are other people you beat out to get that interview. So look at it from that perspective. It's so exciting to be able to have the chance to interview. But it doesn't take away the fact that you're going to still have those butterflies, sweaty palms, your heart's gonna race, it's gonna be a little bit scary. So I recommend you practice relaxation techniques. So there's a lot of breathing techniques you can do when you breathe in, you hold it for a few seconds and then you breathe out really slowly. And then you breathe in, hold it, and then breathe out slowly. So when you do that, it forces your heart rate to slow down and it calms you. And I promise just practicing those breathing exercises it's huge. So if you were at a location ready to interview, you would just sit in your chair waiting to be called into the office and do these breathing exercises just to calm your nerves. It's going to be okay. And you know, just keep thinking it's exciting. Um, another thing that I recommend is um, just realize that this is normal. Being nervous or excited is completely normal. So the interviewer is going to expect you to be kind of nervous. They're not going to expect you to come in and have no nerves whatsoever and be like, oh, I got this. This is great. Because interviewing isn't something we do on a regular basis. It's not like you 
practice interviewing every week, every month, or every year. It's something that only happens when you are about to try to get a job, a new job. And so it takes practice. So it's going to be natural. The person interviewing is going to recognize that it's not natural and you are a little nervous. So they expect it. So don't worry. Don't worry about that. Um, and we're going to talk more about building confidence in just a little bit. Something I wanted to show you, and, and this is an example of the glass door um, example, is it says, tell me about a time when you gave a simple solution to a complex problem, and then it has three answers. Tell me about a time when you invented something, and that doesn't have an answer, so they want you to answer that if you can give them. You know, so, so these are some things that you could answer. Tell me about a time when you solved a problem through just superior knowledge or observation one answer. So you can click on those and get examples. And this is, this is so great. Like this gives you some, a chance to be able to look at possible questions and, and answers that you would have. And we'll talk more about that, but I just wanted to share that example um, that was on Glassdoor. Okay. Handling tricky situations. So when you interview, you're going to have some situations that are uncomfortable and what I like to call tricky. And it's because they just are. It's going to be something you're not expecting, and so I want you to be prepared for that. So dealing with unexpected questions, so questions you're not expecting at all. Pause and reflect. You don't have to answer right away. Sometimes we get, we get very uncomfortable with the pause, the silence, right? Just take a moment to reflect on that and give yourself space to answer. It's not going to penalize you. It's the interviewer isn't going to say, oh, that took Heather a minute to respond. No, they're actually going to respect you for being wise enough to think about it. And you can say, I just need a minute to collect my thoughts. Or you don't need to say that at all. You can just take a pause. And they're going to be able to see that you are thinking about your answer. And if you're on the phone, just, you know, just say, I'd like, a, I'd just like a minute. And then that way, that long pause, they'll, they'll understand why there's a long pause. And that's perfectly okay. You don't want to jump right in because then you're going to start spewing gobbledygook that doesn't really make sense because you're nervous and you're trying to get your brain to catch up with your mouth. So take the time to um, take advantage of that pause. If the question is unclear, ask them for clarification. I know a lot of us have had children in spelling bees. And what do they ask? They say, can you use it in a sentence? That's a chance for that person in the spelling bee, that child, to have a, a chance to, again, think about the word and have some context behind it. So it, doesn't, it does not hurt to ask for a little bit of time to be able to you know, wait in your answer and ask them for clarification. So if you don't understand what they were asking, say, can you, can you explain that a little bit better? Or, or what did you mean by that? Perfectly okay. So um, if you don't know the answer, it's okay to admit you don't have the answer. It's, it, that's okay too. Much better than lying or just fumbling around. If you don't know, just admit it and just say, I, I don't have that information, but offer to follow up. So if it's something that you know you could get the information for and you just don't have it there, it's on a, not off the tip of your tongue, or not on the tip of your tongue, then just say, can I get back to you with that? And I have had someone do that in an interview and that's perfectly fine. They just sent me an email later and, and answered that question for me. Um, navigating salary discussions. Now this was something that was always really hard for me because I didn't know what I was worth. I, I really struggled with my value. And so something I recommend you do before you even start your interviewing is to research on Glassdoor because they will list roles and the typical salary in your area. So people who live, for example, in San Francisco for the exact same job title are going to make more money than people here in Utah because of the cost of living, right? Same thing with people overseas. That's going to be different from those that are here in the United States. And also similarly, those that have, um, you know, like the, the, the experience level, right? So in other words, if you have lots of experience, you should get paid more than somebody who has less experience, but you're both applying for the same job, right? So understand that. And so when you do a search, you can find out 
what are people in your area for your role getting paid so you have an idea and a salary range also certain industries pay more so for example when i switched from the industry that i was in into tech i got paid a lot more because tech gets they they typically you move faster you end up working a lot more hours typically but they also have a lot more um, revenue coming in to those tech companies and so they can pay more. So recognize that if you're working for a nonprofit, you're not gonna make as much as you would be if you're working in tech. And so understand that those companies know what is reasonable. And they there's lots of programs now that their HR departments can use to determine what people in certain roles should get paid. And they're going to wanna to stay pretty you know, pretty much in the median, they're going to want to kind of be similar to other companies in those same industries. So do the research to know what is the salary range. And then what I'm, what I, what I also like to recommend is if they say to you, you know, what are your salary expectations? Delay the conversation. You don't have to say, just say, I'd like to understand the role a little bit more before we, you know, talk about that. Um, I think it's also important to discuss that you're willing to have a you know have a discussion about the the salary um, when you're asked very specifically to give a number let's say there was a job and they just said i need to know exactly what you're thinking give a range give a low range and a high range and then you fall somewhere in the middle then that way you have been able to answer the question like for example they might say to you what were you making in your last company okay that's kind of uncomfortable that's a that's a tricky situation for me that made me uncomfortable and so I gave a range um, I did not say I was making X amount because I didn't want that to preclude me from making more because I didn't want them to think oh Heather would be really happy with that because it's it's two thousand dollars more than what she was making no you want to give you want to give a range and so when I went from my um, my the company that I had when I was in my MBA program and then I got my MBA and then I went to the tech company I didn't know what I could make. I was like, well, now I have an MBA, so I know I should be making more than somebody who doesn't have an MBA, but I just didn't know. And so I gave them a range and then they ended up giving me uh, my salary was um, above that even. So just because you give them a range doesn't mean that that's what they're going to give you too. You could get paid more than what you even give as your range. But if I were to rec give a recommendation, it would be delay the conversation and just say you'd like to understand more about the role before you actually give a specific figure. And I think that, that, that they're used to that, but they would love to know because then they can kind of gauge how much that they will pay you. Um, another sticky or a tricky um, situation is when they ask you about your career gap. We have already talked about that, but for those who weren't here um, when we did talk about it, I thought it would be important to bring it up. And the, the first thing is to be honest. They, like own it, don't, don't hide, don't, don't try to make up some excuse or just, just say, yes, I had a career gap. You can explain why, I think that's perfectly fine, or you don't have to. I like to know, I like to understand, especially if they were caring for their children or their aged parents or like that, that makes me feel like, oh, okay, they're, they're helping their family, that, that feels good to me. So I, I think it's perfectly fine to say exactly why you had that age, I mean, why you had that career gap. Um, I think something else that's really important is to highlight those skills and experiences that you had during the gap. You did lots, you know, besides taking care of your families. So think about if you did any training, if you did any volunteer, if you did, you know, Cub Scouts, if you helped at the school, if you were, a, you know, a room mother, all of those things that shows experience and it shows that you're willing to learn. And so if you did a certification, even if you just did a free course online, Employers love to know that you want to learn, that you are continuing to learn and better yourself. So right now, if you're not ready to enter the workforce, do that right now. Get on the internet and find some course, some online course that is free. There's tons that are free and learn about something that interests you. It doesn't even have to be necessarily specific to what you want to go into because you may not know. but but show that you're learning because that also tells the employer that if you don't know how to do a specific task that's in the job requirements, that you're willing to put in the time to learn and figure it out. Um, I think it's also important to show that your career gap allowed you to um, gain perspective, right? Having that 
gap allows you to then re-enter the workforce with a fresh perspective, which is also really great. There are some companies that uh, force, they, they try to force their employees to either quit or they naturally try to, you know, move them out of the company because they want new blood, new fresh perspectives coming in all the time. And so they're going to, they're going to want to have new people, new perspectives. So, so share that and that this gives you even more of a, a motivation to contribute um, now that you're returning to the workforce. Okay. So those are the, the tricky situations that I think you, you might have, or you might come across. Building confidence. So when you return to the workforce, especially if you're like me, where it's been almost 20 years and you haven't had a, a job job, I had my eBay business, but I wasn't going into a company. I didn't have a manager. I didn't have to dress nice. Like all of these things, I, I didn't have to interview for that. That was just my eBay business. So when you go back into the workforce, it is like you don't have confidence. And I remember having the conversation with my brother, Brian, when I was trying to get a job right after I got divorced and I had to provide for my family. I remember he said to me, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know. Like I had been doing, I had graduated in communications with an emphasis in advertising. So I knew that I could do advertising, but because it was all digital now, I didn't feel like I could do it at all. Like I didn't even have any confidence at, at whatsoever to be able to do advertising at all. Like not even regular advertising, like let alone digital, I couldn't do it. And so I just had no confidence in my skills uh, period. And so this is a time to build confidence and it's not easy, but it does come over time. So I have some suggestions for you. So recognize self doubt is something that we all have. I have it and I have a job and I, like work every day and I work with executives and people that I you know are smarter than me. I have self doubt all the time. I, you know, I don't know that I can do this. I don't know that I know this material well enough. I don't think I can handle the presentation. I don't think I have the self doubt. So people, you know, women are going to be having the self doubt regardless of where they are in their career journey. So those who are in the workforce have self doubt and those who are out of the workforce have self doubt. So just know you're going to have it and it's completely normal. Um, I talked also in another workshop about the power of positive affirmations, and this is legitimately a way to overcome that self-doubt. I studied a lot about positive affirmations to understand what they are, how do you make a list of positive affirmations, and the basic gist of it is you want to make a list of statements that you will read out loud every day of what you want as if it is happening to you right now, as if you are in the present, that person. So my first list of affirmations was something like, I am smart, I am strong, I am assertive, I am capable, I am like those things. And I said it as I am, because I wanted to train my brain to think that I really was those things. And at first, when I made that list and I put my list on my mirror, I laughed when I read it the first time. I literally laughed out loud because it seemed so ridiculous that I thought I was smart. And because I didn't think I was, and I didn't think I was capable. And I, I think I even put on there that I'm a rock star. And I'm like, I'm definitely not a rock star. But what is interesting, and, and they also recommend that you say it with gusto, with energy, with like, you know, say it with emotion because your body will feel it more. And again, it tricks your mind. So I would say like, I am strong. I am impactful i am capable i am and and you know even move with it like jump up and down and say it and it's again it seems really hokey because i have heard about this for years and never did it and then once i started doing it it gave me so much confidence and you're basically tricking your mind into thinking that you are these things and for whatever reason i am here to tell you that it works and i put my list of affirmations on my mirror and also next to my computer once I had my job because I had days when I doubted my abilities during the day and I had to relook at that list and remind myself I was capable, that I was smart, that I could do these things and eventually got to the point where it was memorized. So on my way to the gym, I would say these things in my mind. When I was driving, I would say these things in my mind again, just tricking myself into believing that I was these things. And for whatever reason, it, it works. And so if you don't have confidence, I encourage you to make your list of affirmations. I, I don't know that I put it on your, your checklist of homework, but add that and make sure that you have that affirmation list and, and do it. And like I said, say it with 
meaning. And even if you don't believe it, you're not going to believe it at first. You're not going to believe that you're smart. You're not going to think that you're capable, but you eventually you will be, and it will just, it'll, it'll be a, a, a great tool for you. Um, also visualization techniques. So visualizing yourself in the role that you want to be in and having confidence that you can do that. Like see yourself going into the office or into the school or wherever it is that you're trying to get that job into that organization and picture yourself, picture yourself talking with other people, picture yourself doing a presentation, whatever it is that that role would entail, visualize it. I, when I worked for KT Tape, I worked with a lot of famous athletes and Olympians. And I did, I worked with Carrie Strug who got a gold medal as a gymnast. And she said that those visualizations are legit. Like they would spend hours and hours visualizing the perfect, you know, gymnastics routine. And she said that the power in that is because your body, your, your mind can see it and then your body will act as if when you're in that pressure field situation. So visualize yourself as if you have that job, visualize yourself having those conversations and that also can build confidence. Conduct mock interviews with a family member or a friend. And I know this sounds like a pain and it's embarrassing because they're gonna ask you questions and you're gonna say stupid things and you're gonna fumble over your words, but so much better to do it with a friend or a family member than with the actual person that's trying to hire you. And so get a list of those questions off the internet and hand that to the person that's going to ask you those you know, mock interview questions and have them ask you and have you say and do it over and over again and have them give you feedback and take a note and write down what was the feedback. Which ones did you not do so great on? Which ones do you need to practice again? And then practice. If you want the job, you're gonna do the extra work. And sometimes that's what it takes. It just takes going the extra mile because somebody else who's also interviewing for that job isn't doing it. So they tell athletes that if you're not, you know, if you're not practicing every day, somebody else is and they're going to surpass you. And that's what I'm telling you too. Somebody else that wants that job more than you is gonna take the time to practice with their family member to make sure that they are able to answer those questions with confidence. So practice that. Um, also wearing professional attire that you're excited to wear makes you confident. If you have the budget to be able to buy something new, even if it's just new to you, it doesn't have to be brand new. You could have bought it at a consignment shop or gone at a Goodwill, but it's new to you. If you feel confident in what you're wearing, it just, it makes you feel better. It makes you feel like you can do this. And especially if it looks like you're dressing for the part, I can't tell you, it just brings more confidence. So take the time to find the clothing that you're going to wear and, and, and buy it. And even if it's a little bit of an investment, um, preparing for the interview is going to give you confidence, making sure you have a chance to go over those questions when you, preparation is confidence. Like, you know, you can do it. And that's why you've taken the time to prepare. You're going to be more confident that way too. Um, there are some common questions that, that you might be asked that you also need to prepare for. So these are questions that are asked in lots of interview situations. So I just wanted to go over some of those again. Preparing for the common questions are just as important as the tricky or the hard ones. Tell me about yourself. I remember when I first started to interview and they would say, tell me about yourself, Heather. I'm like, oh, I like to play the piano. And I like, you know, like, I didn't know that what they were really asking me was, tell me why you are here. Why are you here interviewing for the marketing position? That's really what they're asking. And so you've got to give them information about yourself that tells them why you're, why you're there, why you're interviewing. So, you know, another format that might come in is tell me about your, bar, your background or tell me what you've done in marketing. They want to know like your interest in the, the role. Like what is your passion? Do you have a passion about that? Another question that they might ask, and again, this is, you know, according to marketing, because that's what my background is, is why are you interested in a career in marketing? And what they're really asking is, is, you know, what made you apply for this role? Okay. And, and that's something you've got to think about. Like what, yeah, why, why did you apply for this role? Okay. What do you like about marketing? So think about that in that, that regard too. So another question they might ask you is what are your hobbies and interests? And that is important to ask, to answer, what are your hobbies and interests? But what they're really asking is, is will you get along with the rest of the team? Like, you know, knowing what different hobbies people have on the team will kind of help, like they, they can tell whether you'll get along with other um, people on the team. 
And then when they ask you, do you have any questions? This is key. Make sure you have questions to ask them. Do not ever say, nope, I learned everything I needed to in this interview. Thank you so much. Nope. You are going to have a list, I would say at least three questions to ask. And sometimes interviews go longer and they're running out the door and they don't have time. So they're, they might say, do you have any questions? And you only have a minute to ask, answer, ask a question. Ask one question of your three. That's really important. So they want to know that you're interested and curious in the job and in the company. So have thought in advance, what are some questions you have about the job or the company? What, what do you want to know? And make sure you have several so that if they've answered all those in the interview process, you've got some questions to ask them. And there's also a way you can Google um, or, or ask in the search bar, um, what are some you know, good questions to ask the, the hiring manager for you know, whatever company or the role or whatever it is. You can find this all out. This is not hard. And so I've gotten some of my best questions by doing that Google um, question. So um, take the time to do that. Um, also thinking you can also answer um, what your goals are for the workplace. Like what are your goals for that job, right? So that again shows that you're not only curious, but you want to take action and you want to make an impact. So super, super helpful. And then lastly, practice, practice, practice. And I already said that, but I can't say it enough. Practice. Because the fact that you got an interview is huge. That like you beat out hundreds of applicants, maybe thousands. So the fact that you're there able to have an interview, make sure you make it count and practice as if you're not going to have any other interviews from any other jobs because that might happen. You might, I'm, I'm helping a former um, coworker who used to work for me at one of the companies that I worked at and he has been out of work and I've been helping him and he has been applying and he, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, he finally got an interview, which is great. And so he has to make that count, right? That might be the only interview that he has in his entire um, job uh, search. Um, and then lastly, write the thank you note. Remember how I said you should write the thank you note to the hiring manager. And you, it can be an email, but if you have the address and you can mail it, holy cow, that would be so impressive to get a card saying, thank you so much for taking the time. I loved lear learning about the company. I would welcome the opportunity to work with you or work for you. And I, and I shared, um, that one of my, in a past workshop, I shared that one of the gals that I hired was, she sent me an email, a thank you email, but she recorded herself on her iPhone, uploaded it to YouTube and thanked me in a video. Who does that? No one does that. I, I hired her because I knew that if she went the extra mile to thank me, she's going to go the extra mile in her job. And that's 100% how it's been. She is amazing. And I'm so glad that I hired her. But that said something. You need to do things that are going to make you stand out, and that helped her stand out 100%. So these are the takeaways. You never get the chance to make a second impression. So go in with your best foot forward. Make sure that you're dressed appropriately, that you have a nice firm handshake. We talked about that last time. And you know, have great eye contact. And, and especially if you're doing those interviews over video, make sure you're looking as, you know, make sure that the computer laptop is at eye level so that you are looking as if you're right in front of that interviewer. Make sure you take those extra steps to make a good impression. Prepare based on the interview format. So if you know you're, you're not gonna be going into the office for the interview, you don't have to dress all nice and fancy if it's just a phone call. But if it's an interview over Zoom or over your computer, you're gonna to wanna to look as if you were in person. So you're gonna dress nicely and, and make sure you take the time. So prepare for that, you know, the different interview format. You build confidence by being prepared. So I promise you, you'll be less nervous for your interview if you've taken the time to be prepared. Doing the mock interview questions and making sure you have your answers and you feel really com confident, that will help you feel more relaxed. Practice, practice, practice. You just, you only get one chance. Make sure you make it count. So make those practice sessions count. Take the time. Your family members and your friends will want to help you get the job. So they'll take the time. A job interview is not a test of your knowledge, but your ability to use it at the right time. So in an interview, when you're being asked these questions, you've got to think on your feet. This is an opportunity to be able to show that you can use 
your mind and have articulate conversations with someone when you are on the spot. Because that's what a lot of jobs require, right? But this is my, this is such a great quote. If you are able to believe in Santa Claus for like eight years, you can believe in yourself for like five minutes, okay? So give yourself a pat on the back for taking these really hard steps. Returning the workforce is not easy, but it's gonna be so worth it and you'll build confidence over time. It's like these muscles that have been dormant. As you continue to do these things, you'll, you'll get stronger at it, you'll get better at it. And so believe in yourself for just a little bit. You can do that, right? And it's all in your, your mind, your head. And some people have lots of confidence exterior on the exterior and inside they're dying. Like they're just so embarrassed, they have self-doubt, but fake it till you make it. And you can believe in yourself. Just give yourself a chance to, to just go into it with confidence. And I promise you, you'll have, it'll be a great experience. And also something I didn't get a chance to, to mention earlier is every interview situation is practice. So if you get called to do a, an interview with a company that you're not really interested in, let's say someone got your interview, they got your resume from someone else, or they saw you on LinkedIn and they thought you'd fit this role perfectly, interview with them. Every chance you get a chance to interview, it's practice and it will help you down the road. And who knows, you might learn more about that company and then realize, oh, actually, I think I would like to work for you. Like for example, my role that I'm in currently for Spinnaker Support, it's a remote role. The first time they recruited me, I wasn't interested. I said, nope, no thank you. And, but then I remembered that interviews are good and good practice, so I went ahead and interviewed. I didn't, I still didn't think that the role was right for me. So when the recruiter came back to me and they asked me, do you want it? You know, like we would really like to offer you the role. I said, thank you. I'm really happy where I am. And a couple of days went by and he texted me and he says, um, we'd like to change the job for you. Would you be interested in this? And I was like, well, yeah, I would. It was a higher title, more pay. And then I ended up taking the job. So do take the time to interview for potential roles that aren't what you really want. It's good practice. You'll meet someone, you'll build your network, and who knows, you might get a job offer for something that you didn't expect. So I, you know, in closing, I, I just, I love helping moms. I love doing this because I've been there. I know what it's like to start from scratch, no confidence, and I look now like probably like I know what I'm doing, I have confidence, but it took me years to figure this out and I want to help all of you. And so if I can help accelerate it and help you be successful, that's, that's what I'm here for. And so I hope you will follow um, Be Braven on social media if you haven't already. And then the website braven.com with two Vs and we have the recordings for all the workshops up to this point on YouTube. So you can go back and watch um, some of those workshops, you can watch it on a faster speed so you can get through it faster. And it, I mean, hopefully they'll be valuable. And if you know somebody else who's also looking either to switch jobs or return the workforce, those videos can be really helpful. And they'll be up on YouTube for as long as I, you know, deem it necessary. So anyway, um, I wish you all the best of luck. And next week, we are going to be talking about balancing work and um, home life. So that's our last workshop, and I think that's going to be really helpful, so hopefully you can, you can make it.